Alright guys, welcome back to the mostly last part. Uh, there's going to be some optimization to this particular uh, list system. I'm going to be working on it a little bit in my spare time because I have noticed that if you have multiple items of the same type and then go and remove it, then it removes all of them, which can be useful in some cases, but uh, it could also be kind of a problematic thing if you have like a long list of things so there's also going to be some expansions to the uh, particular thing uh, this tutorial series for making different uses and stuff for it for like examples and stuff like that but uh, with that being said what we're going to be covering today is actually replacing things so I have two items in my inventory and the mechanics behind this is just for the example that we can basically um, replace the honeycomb with the uh, diamond. So if we were to set the diamond in our offhand and then I believe it's just right click or shift. All right, so if we uh, shift and then right click and then have the honeycomb in our main hand and the diamond in our offhand, then it will replace it with the diamond text. So as you can see, it's done that. So let's do that one more time. I'm going to just switch that, remove it, and then we're going to go honeycomb, offhand, shift. Helps if we have the item in our hand, shift, and there we go, we replaced it with diamond. So that's basically how that works. Uh, now if we were to use the GY itself, uh, if we go into here, uh, we could go and set our replace name so we don't actually have anything in our list so let's add a honeycomb and then we'll open up G again we'll go honeycomb and then what we'll do is we'll set this to diamond and then we'll replace and then as you can see down here basically replace that with diamond so that's basically how that works in the GUI and I don't think in the other part I actually covered the checking script so I'll cover that right now too so if we want to check for diamond and then we can click check and then it will print out text down here for basically testing for the diamond if it returns true if it doesn't return to true then what we're going to not get any output so uh, some we can just call it dome and then we'll just check and as you can see no pop-up has happened in the chat so that's basically how the checking script works all right so let's go into M Crater and I'll show you how to basically how the script works for replacing things and then I'll also cover the script for how to optimize it for the right click and what parts need to be used to basically replace for other uses. All right, so there are a few different changes. The first thing, like always, we're going to quickly take a look at the player right click event that we have set up. I've changed it just a little bit to optimize for our tutorial for our, our example script. Now this will make more sense when we actually go ahead and look at this new script that we basically created. But basically I organized it from the last tutorial. It just added an else if statement. Tests for if both the right hand and the left hand are not air items or basically empty hands and it basically runs the replace script. The other script here are basically the exact same thing as the last part. So with that being said, let's move on to the script itself. Let's take a look at the basic script. Now again, if you haven't, um, watched the previous parts so that's just going back and doing that because I do explain how this uh, testing system with the repeaters work and after those are run we basically those tests for the commas and test how many commas there are as well and what we're doing after that is actually the replace script itself so 
Uh, if you haven't, I uh, believe it was, what one was it? I believe it, I covered it in the either checking script uh, or the uh, removing script. One of those two uh, parts that I basically covered. Uh, this particular system right here, which is really important to progress. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on how it works because I did in that video, so basically go check that out. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you guys can quickly navigate there if you want to go watch that first. So after basically we're testing for the commas and testing how many commas there are, then what we're going to do is we're also testing for the part right here where the the values were between the commas we're going to be testing for what the list item is now in our first text box the top text box that you saw me use this had to do with the actual list value this is basically what we're going to be testing for and then down below after we basically can confirm that the text is in that particular string so our variable is our string basically so if we know it's in that variable then what it does is it basically moves on to the next stage so we're going to be testing again to make sure that the first comma position and the second comma position are within the length of the substring text so this is important to make sure that it doesn't go over the amount and crash the game and then what we're going to do is we're basically going to test if the or we're going to get the substring text of the global variable and we're going to get the first position and second position where we're basically testing for it which should be equal to the same thing in our top text box if that's true then what we're going to do is we're going to set our global string to replace and then we're going to use our substring text again same basic thing that we used here to replace the first comma and second comma position with our replace uh, text box and then we're going to basically set the global variable of itself to make sure that it replaces in the same basic spot so that's basically how that works it's really straightforward when it comes down to it um, once you have the understanding of the script here, it makes a lot more sense of how it's basically done. Now, the only three things that we actually need to replace uh, technically here are the, the list variable, these two right here, and the replace variable right here, or the text box fields. Those are the three components that you'll have to update to basically make it so it's for other uses like right-click events or anything that uses strings. Another thing to note is a lot of these other script here are using global variables. Anything that uses the global variable type will need to be updated if you are um, importing the procedure. So all those little strings here will be have to have to um, be updated. I'll make sure to add little notations on them to say that they're a global variable and not a local variable just in case you're using local variables in the string itself. Alright so let's move on to the last part of the tutorial and that's under examples. And then we're going to take a look at just basically what I've done to update the actual right click event. So now remember these two right here are basically what item we're basically testing for. And this one right here is basically what we're replacing it with. So what I've done is I've gotten the display name of the main hand and got the display of the main hand of the provided entity for these two right here. This will basically test from if the main hand item is the same as has the same value in our main script or our very global variable. And if that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to get our offhand of the display name of our offhand item. And then what we're going to do is basically 
replace that with or replace our main hand item uh, display name in our global variable with our offhand display name. And that basically just takes the main hand if it's in the global variable of the text from the display name, and then it's going to just replace it with the display name of the offhand. So that's basically what happens there. And um, yeah, you can basically just customize this. As long as it's a string of some sort, it will work fine. So you can convert a whole bunch of different things for, to strings, uh, not just um, strings themselves, but you can convert numbers using this block. And uh, there's also a few different other things that you can basically um, convert into strings. For example, you could turn uh, text if it's true. Uh, if we grab this, this should work. Yeah, so if we go like that, then you're creating text that is true. And you also can do that with um, other variables as well. So you can use actual variables and then test if it's the value of it and it will return the value. So outside of that, uh, that's all the time that I have for today. I'll be working on the script a little bit more, hopefully coming out with a couple more parts. But uh, for now, that's all that I have. I'll make the, the uh, workspace public as well as add little notations to the parts for the script and upload that to github so you guys can start using the script itself but uh, outside of that that's all the time that i have for today if you're new to my channel do not forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out